This is Google Apps Updates Roundup number 99. In this episode, I will show you more than 40 new features in 13 different Google Apps. So make sure all your Google Apps are up to date and let me show you what's new. Before starting, let me remind you about the Wallpapers by In-Depth Tech Reviews app. I just uploaded these 12 new wallpapers that you can see now on the screen and you will find the Google Play Store download link in the description below. And now let's get back to Google Apps. Let's start the episode with Google Photos and here I'm going to show you a massive number of new features. The first new change is under the main photos view. Now when you tap on the ellipses, you will get a brand new customization page with much more options than ever before. The first thing you can do here is the ability to change the layout. You have comfortable, day, and month. That's exactly the same thing as pinching on your photos view to swap between the three same options, but now you have a different way to do this. After that, we have the stack similar photos toggle that we already have for a while, and a whole new section to customize what photos to show and hide from your photos view with much more options than ever before. The first thing you need to decide here is if you want to show content from other apps or not. When you turn off the switch, all the other options will disappear. And when you turn it on, you will get more customization layers. The first one is to only show backed up content. So for example, let's say you backed up a couple of photos from your WhatsApp folder. These are the only two photos that will show up in your main photos view, but nothing else. But you have one more customization option here called hide clutter from apps. It says photos like screenshots, GIFs, and memes are hidden after they are backed up. So for example, you backed up your whole WhatsApp folder, but you have some clutter as shown here, some screenshots, GIFs, and memes, and you don't want to show this stuff while keeping them backed up to the cloud. That's when you need to turn on the toggle and the AI will automatically detect these photos and hide them from the main photos view. But you can take it even further and tap on customize by app. In this case, you will see all the app folders and you can decide what you want to show or not to show. So let's say I will tap on the files app and I'm going to tap on show all and then done. In this case, the files app will follow its own settings regardless what settings we have in this page. And when I go back to the main photos view, you will notice that all the photos I have in my files app are now showing in the main photos view. And also it got its own section called show all. Let's say I want to hide clutter from Google Chrome. In this case, it will only show the normal photos from Google Chrome in my main photos view. And you'll notice here that the hide clutter section has been created and it shows Google Chrome. But let's say in case of Gmail, I want to hide everything. You will see here a third section has been created. So that's everything I wanted to show you under the new photos view page. But let me show you one more cool trick that I really like. When you scroll down a bit until you get a fill color around the ellipses, now you will see something different. We have a gear icon that will take you to the same settings page, but you have a quick shortcut over here called all photos. This one will temporarily show all the photos you have on your phone, regardless your settings. So let's say you have some photos you want to share from your Telegram folder, WhatsApp folder. You can quickly jump to this view, take the photos you want to share, and then tap on the X and you are back to normal. Another new change that works nicely with the photos view feature is when you go to your photos settings and then backup, scroll down and then go to backup device folders. Now you can see how many items under each folder to give you an idea about the stuff you are going to backup. You have the ability to backup all device folders at once using one toggle with a quick shortcut to the photos view settings from here as well. Now let's talk about the memories as they got tons of new changes. The first one is the new fonts I started to see. For example, this is the first time to see a handwritten font like this one. And also I started to see some emojis and the bigger font in the memory titles. On top of this, when you tap on the ellipses, you will see more options. For example, you can edit the photo directly from here. Tapping on this button will take you to the normal photo editor. You can remove this memory from your carousel and also edit the title immediately from the same screen. Another killer feature we got is the ability to share your memories as videos. So when you tap on the share button and then share memory, you will notice here that I got a new share button. Tapping on it will allow you to share it as a video when you use quick share or any of the third party apps. So let me tap on more and as you see it created the video for me and this is how it looks inside whatsapp 
It looks exactly the same as if I'm in Google Photos. Under the Memories tab itself, I also found some new changes. The first one, when you tap and hold on any memory, you can immediately edit the title with the ability to use AI to generate suggestions for you. And when I tap on the ellipses and then tap on share, I got this redesigned share sheet that only appears under the Memories tab. Here you can share it via link to any app as a video and you have an options key where you can turn off the photo locations for more privacy. The next app we have is YouTube and here I'm gonna show you three new changes. The first change I noticed is the redesigned icons all over the app. When you look closely at the top bar, you will see the icons now have thicker lines and the icons at the bottom are slightly different and smaller as well. And when you go to the history and then tap on view all, now you can see the shorts in a separate carousel. Under the comment section, when you tap on the profile picture of any person, now you get this overlay card with a subscribe and view channel buttons. And when you tap on the ellipses, you can learn more about this feature. Next, Google Chrome. And here I'm gonna show you eight new changes. Let's start with the new tab. Now you have the ability to modify what cards to show on your new tab by going to settings and you will find a new menu item called new tab page cards. Here you will find three toggles, one for continue with this tab, one for price drops on tabs and safety check. You will also notice that the plus button in the multi tab view is now shifted towards the corner instead of showing next to the last tab like before. The inactive tabs feature I talked about in episode 97 got some further tweaks with the new version of Google Chrome. Now when you go to settings, you will find a new menu item called tabs and here you will find inactive. From here you can adjust the time needed before considering the tab as inactive. You can set it to never, 7 days, 14 days, 30 days and you have a separate toggle to close the tabs after 60 days if not used. Another change under settings, when you go to accessibility, now you have the option to show the zoom option in main menu. So let me show you a quick example. Let's say I want to zoom in this page. When I tap the ellipses, I will find zoom over here. Tapping on it will show me a slider at the bottom where I can zoom in and out like this or drag my finger and it's very fluid. One more change under settings, when you go to safety check, you will see this new compact design with everything collapsed. And when you tap on any of the items, it will give you a quick shortcut to go to the relevant page like notification settings, site settings, security settings, password manager, etc. Another cool feature I spotted is the ability to get tabs from other devices. Once you sign in with the same Google account on Google Chrome for the first time, you will get this floating card on the screen. It will show you what devices that you can choose from. I have the 9 Pro XL and the Pixel 8 Pro. I can immediately open the 14 tabs I have on my 9 Pro XL or I can review them like this and uncheck whatever I don't need and then tap on open 11 tabs and now I have everything matching my Pixel 9 Pro XL. Change number two, when you merge two tabs together to create a group, now you will immediately get this overlay card which will ask you for a name and a color for your tab group and this is how it looks when you tap on done. When you keep the name without any change, it says here two tabs, but notes when I remove any of these tabs from the group, it will automatically change the name to one tab and it will not delete the group like before, but it will keep it as it is so you can add more tabs to it later. Last but not least, the predictive back gesture seems to be working with Google Chrome now. It's not consistent, but as you see here, when I restarted the app, now it works. But keep in mind that this feature doesn't work when you move between web pages using the back gesture like this. It only works when you try to quit the app, and as you see, it doesn't work now but sometimes it works. The next app we have is Google Play Store and here I'm gonna show you two new changes. The first change is under the search tab. Now you will see this new trending card at the top that will show you the trending apps and games and you can jump right away to the app page from here. The second change is the ability to download and install a massive number of apps at the same time. Take a look at this screenshot. Here it's installing five apps simultaneously plus downloading three other apps all happening 
at the same time, which is crazy when compared to the previous versions. Next, we have Google app, and here I'm gonna show you four new changes. The first change is the addition of a fourth tab called notifications, and here you can see all the notifications from your Google app in one place. Change number two, under the saved tab, we no longer have the liked and followed tabs at the top, but we only have the saved items and collections, and you can see a screenshot on the left showing the older design. The third change is under the profile menu, and now the interests option got replaced with something called saves and collections, which takes you to the same saved tab. And lastly, in some cases, the Discover feed might show you articles based on your recent searches. Now let's talk about Google Contacts, and here I'm gonna show you four new changes. The first change is under the Contacts main page, and now the filters are hidden under this new button. And when you go to the search, now you can see the recent contacts you opened with the ability to clear the history from here. And when you set a birthday for any of your contacts, now you get a redesigned date and time picker. And finally, we got a brand new widget called favorites that you can add to your home screen. So let me show you how it looks. Here is how the widget looks. And when you tap on any of the contacts, it will take you to the contact relevant page and you can make it as big as the entire screen. Now let's talk about the Pixel Weather app and here I'm gonna show you two new changes. The first one is the new immersive weather vibrations that you can find under the profile menu. Tapping on it will allow you to turn the feature on or off. When you activate it, you will get haptic feedback based on the weather conditions. So if it's raining, for example, you will get haptic feedback if you have a thunderstorm and so on and so forth. But unfortunately, I didn't have the chance to try this feature because nothing changed in my area. But a lot of people are really impressed by having this feature. The second change is the rollout of the Pixel 9 weather app on older Pixel models. Here I have the 7 Pro. And when I go to the weather, as you see, I have the same exact app. The only difference is the AI weather report is only available on the Pixel 9 models. I couldn't find it on any of the older models, including the 8 Pro. Now let's talk about the apps that only got one new change and I will start with Google Calendar. Now you can see a quick shortcut to the Google Tasks app next to the profile menu, which is very convenient. Moving to the Digital Wellbeing app, now you can set screen time reminders that you can find under settings and then Digital Wellbeing and you will see a new menu item called the screen time reminders. Here you can turn the feature on or off you cannot set the reminder time frame, but you can select or deselect apps like this. And for reference, here's how the notification looks. Some people got their first notification after 15 minutes, while others got it after 25, so it's not consistent. Moving to Gemini, now you can see it as one of the targets in your share sheet, which will make it easier to share files with your AI assistant. Google Wallet got a minor visual tweak. Now when you tap on Add to Wallet, you will see a new squiggly line that separates between the top options and the photo option. In Google Messages, the RCS setup is on available while roaming even though I have the data roaming activated and this is something new to me because I always been able to use my Egyptian SIM card and activate RCS messaging here in the UE without a problem so it seems like Google is changing the activation process. Moving to the Gmail app, I started to notice much better animations the more I interact with it. So for example, when I tap on the search, as you see, there's a much better animation, how the search bar expands and then the keyboard nicely comes from the bottom. Also, when I tap on the side menus, open messages and so on, it feels much nicer than before. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new features I wanted to show you in Google Apps. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. But for now, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.